What's going on guys? Alex here with TFL Bike and sitting right next to me is Case as usual. And today we've got some pretty exciting news from Zero because there is an all new electric supermoto and it looks really, really cool. The design is probably my favorite part of it. But before we jump too far into that, Case, what else do we got going on today? Yeah, it's big news in the bike world today because there is also a new Harley Davidson Sportster S and the video on that motorcycle is already up on the channel so be sure to check it out because yeah a lot going on today in terms of bikes. Big news day we're staying busy for sure but anyway let's jump into this new Zero FXE the new electric supermoto from Zero. So it uses their Z Force 75-5 Air-cooled electric brushless motor makes 46 horsepower and 78 foot-pounds of torque all in a package that only weighs 298 pounds and reaches a top speed of 85 miles per hour. And it's powered by a 7.2 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery. Pretty cool setup. Yeah, it also uses a clutchless direct drive transmission. And in terms of range, you get 100 miles of claimed range in the city. They claim 60 miles of range at 55 miles per hour and 40 miles of range at 70 miles per hour. The standard charge time is 9.2 hours, which sounds like a lot, but if you're using this bike to commute a little ways during the day and you let it charge overnight, that's totally doable. You can also buy a rapid charger that charges a bike up in 4.1 hours. That's an additional $600, but it's available. Yeah, so a lot of the tech out of this bike is taken from Zero's FXS. It's kind of got the running gear and the underpinnings of an FXS, but it's got this new design. It's supposed to look way more modern. So let's talk about that for a little bit. I think it looks really, really cool. And that's an area that I think Zero has been struggling in the past few years is making a cool looking bike and this they've managed to really do it. Uh, so let's talk about that a little bit. Zero hired a design firm called Huge Design. They're based in San Francisco to design a concept bike and this is basically what it looked like. Huge Design took some inspiration from some consumer electronics and just tried to make a really modern supermoto and I think they really succeeded in that. Uh, you have what looks like a really small and compact bike, the tank section or what would be where the traditional gas tank is, has this really rounded off futuristic look. And up front, you have a super cool round taillight with this flat angular uh, front fender that sticks out from it. Just a really cool looking bike, LED lighting all the way around. I think they knocked it out of the ballpark with the design on this. Absolutely, it's a really crisp looking bike. Like Alex was saying, sometimes it can be difficult to make an electric motorcycle look really emotional and more than just an appliance because you don't have this engine to highlight in the middle of the chassis, but I think this one does a good job. Now, we've got to talk about suspension because this is another one of the highlights on this motorcycle. So you get fully adjustable Showa 41 millimeter inverted forks in the front, also a fully adjustable Showa rear shock with a piggyback reservoir, seven inches of front travel, 8.9 inches of travel in the rear, and you have Bosch brakes with ABS. So 320 millimeter disc in the front, 240 millimeter disc in the rear, and it's 17 inch wheels front and back with Pirelli Diablo Rosso two tires. I like the range on this bike, you know, 60 miles of range at 55 miles an hour, 40 miles at 70 miles an hour. That sounds really low, but we recently had the Zero DSR Black Forest Edition at the office. We did a whole range test on that at TFL Truck if you wanna see it. Um, but we got decent range out of the bike and this is a bike that's gonna be way more locked into cities and just doing light to light instead of going out into the middle of the plains and climbing up mountains and stuff. This is more of a city bike, so I think the shorter range really isn't an issue at all with this. Yeah, especially for a supermoto, I think that makes a lot of sense. I've ridden supermotos on the highway and um, it's generally not fantastic. They're it not fun awesome. Yeah, they're not awesome highway bikes, so I think it makes a ton of sense to have this in the city. What I really like about this is this is a much more affordable bike and we'll get into the exact pricing at the end of this video but it's small, it's light, and it's compact. And personally, at least, if I was going to get an electric motorcycle, I would want something a little bit smaller, more compact, something that I could throw around, really lean into the torque on, and not worry about the size and weight of it. I, I think, at least in my mind, that's a little bit 
cooler than the really, really large electric bikes that are trying to compete with the fastest, baddest sport bikes out there. Yeah, I totally agree with you. And as far as an electric motorcycle design goes, I think this is futuristic, but still practical. I don't know if you remember that Sondor's Metacycle we covered a couple months ago that had that huge pass through through the center of the bike, but there's nowhere to grip your legs to on that. And they might as well use that empty space for more battery. This looks like a much more traditional way to ride a motorcycle where you can squeeze your legs against the tank and really ride the thing instead of just kind of holding on and having nowhere to put your legs. Let's talk about tech real fast. You guys know I'm a huge tech fan, so we'll go through it really quick. Full LED headlight and taillight, really good looking components all the way around. Love the taillight design. Five inch full color TFT display, which looks amazing. This is a really good looking display, super widescreen, love that. And on the display is the Cypher 2 operating system, which Zero is known for now. And what that allows you to do is connect your smartphone to it. You can uh, change all the parameters of the bike in there, adjust the top speed, adjust the acceleration, um, and just really tune the bike right from your phone, which is a total new way of doing that versus you know taking your gas-powered motorcycle and actually getting it tuned. This, you just pull your phone out and you can adjust things on the fly, tone it down a little bit if you're a new rider, and then bring it up as your skill goes. So. Really cool to see. One thing I just noticed in my notes here that I didn't mention in the design section is the seat height. 33 inch seat height, which is pretty high, but this is a supermoto, so it's to be expected. But just know if you're a shorter rider and you're riding this in the city and have to put your feet out constantly at every light, this might not be the right bike for you. Yeah, you'll obviously have to throw your leg over it and see how you feel on it. But again, because this is a 298 pound bike, that's gonna make it more approachable. And if you're new to riding, of course, it's electric, it doesn't have a clutch, so it overall should be a, a really easy bike to get used to. But uh, real quick, going back to that full color TFT you were mentioning, I think that's a really big deal for this motorcycle because the Black Forest DSR Zero bike that you mentioned earlier that we reviewed, the screen on it was a little bit of a letdown, which is especially disappointing on a motorcycle that's all about new technology. It's an EV, it's supposed to be cutting edge. So when the screen that you interact with isn't as nice looking as it is on some other bikes, yeah, that, that's, that's something that you, uh, you know, lust for a little bit when your motorcycle is supposed to be really high tech. So the fact that this TFT is so good looking is actually a really, really awesome upgrade. Yeah, totally agree. That uh, dash on the DSR looked like a Game Boy and for a bike that you pay $20,000 for and it's supposed to be you know, making you feel like you're riding the future, the dash doesn't do a good job. We have to mention, of course, the price. The MSRP on this motorcycle starts at $11,795, which is not a lot more money than the FX or the FXS that have been out for a while, which is really good to see because there are a lot of awesome updates like we've been mentioning in terms of technology and design on this motorcycle. So to see that it's not considerably more expensive is really cool. Yeah, very good to see. I mean, still a pricey motorcycle. Um, zeros in general tend to be a little bit pricey and you're, you're paying for that new technology and you're paying for, you know, being an early adopter of this kind of technology. Um, $12,000 can get you one hell of a gas powered supermoto. So keep that yeah. in mind. You could get a rip in WR450 or any of the 450 major Japanese bikes. Um, there's even the lower displacement supermotos out now, K Kawasaki has that new 300 SM for like, you know, 5,500 bucks, somewhere around there, five grand. So still a lot of money for a supermoto, but it's a really cool bike. Yeah. And that, you know, high prices for an electric bike is not just a zero thing at all. That's pretty common with electric motorcycles in general. I mean, hell, the live wire just recently dropped from a 30,000 to a just over $20,000 bike, which is a big deal. But yeah, a lot of expensive electric motorcycles out there. This is on the much lower end of the price spectrum for an electric bike, so pretty happy to see that. Yeah, it's good to see that prices are going down and down, you know, as the years goes on, it's just gonna get easier and easier to attain one of these electric motorcycles and have one that looks cool and makes you feel good about riding it and not just saving the environment. So there you go, guys. There's the Zero FXE, all new electric supermoto from Zero. Yes, it does have a lot of the underpinnings as some of their older models, but still good to see that they're making changes, making improvements, and making a bike that more people wanna buy. So let us know what your thoughts are down in the comments below. Again, like Case said, if you're interested in that new Harley, video is already up on the channel, so go check it out. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next video.